I, uh, hi. I haven't, uh, done one of these in a while. I don't do ASMR as much as I, as much as I should, really, I guess, but, um, a few of those projects in the works, whatever. It's about damn time I did an ASMR video game update, and, um, because I'm going to be kind of all over a little bit here, I wanted to start with this, try to get as much of this out of the way as I possibly can. Um, for all the stuff that is, um, just, you know, digital stuff and whatever, I want to just kind of list that off, probably, because that'd be easier. So, the lights are a little lower right now, I still got some of my Christmas stuff up, because I'm too lazy to put it away, I haven't done it yet. Um, so let's just try to get started on listing all the stuff that you've missed out on since I last, uh, updated, which I think has been months now. Um, it's technically, I'm recording this a few days into January, but, uh, we're gonna count it as all the stuff I've gotten th through December, and we'll just call it December 2018. That's when the update is, because it's going through December. Uh, <laughs> well, let's see here, we got Sanctum, yeah, that's right, Sanctum 2, um, that's the Steam 1. I think that's like a tower defense thing that I think might also be like a first person shooter. I could be wrong about that point part, but I think it's kind of like you set up stuff and then you can also run around and shoot things. It's been a while since I looked. I haven't played it yet, so I don't know. But uh, I won that one on Steam Gifts, I'm pretty sure. Haunted. Another Steam won it. I think I won. I don't remember what it is. Defend Your Life. Same thing. I actually don't remember what that one is either. That might be a tower defense. But it might, I might be thinking of something else. It has a, a lot of stuff on Steam has similar titles, so it's hard. And a lot of it I won when I was using Steam Gifts more. I haven't used it as much for a while, so whenever I started writing this, I was still using it more. And I think as the list goes on, some of the stuff is less steamy. Um, Dungeon Defenders. That's one I, uh, I do know about a bit. I've seen some gameplay of that. And that one, I believe, is also actually like a tower defense game. Maybe there was like a bundle or something of tower defense stuff that uh, I entered for around that time. But uh, I believe Dungeon Defenders is the one where like you have different characters you can pick. I think they have like kind of like different classes, so they have different abilities. And you run around and try to kill things as you set up traps and stuff. Um, and the main goal is to try and stop all of the enemies from getting into your base and attacking your base. So it's not necessarily building towers per se, but it's built off of that idea and giving you more of an active role in the tower defense rather than setting up defenses and then waiting to see what happens. Um, it looked cool, I just haven't gotten around to it. I think there's actually a free one of those also. It had some kind of subtitle attached to it, I believe. Because uh, I know they had a sequel come out, but I believe they also put out uh, a free-to-play thing. I might be thinking of something else, actually. Uh, there might be Orcs Must Die that did it, which was a similar kind of concept for it. They, I'm, I'm probably thinking of that. I haven't checked that out, but I did eyeball that a little bit to be like, oh, that would be fun to check out since I've thought those looked cool, but I don't know. I haven't checked anything out. I'm way behind on everything. Well, this is old. Uh, Japanese Women Animated Jigsaws. Um, so this is old enough to the point where this must have been like the summer, even. I think, because I believe I got that in the summer. <clears throat> I think that's one I actually bought, which is just putting together basically like jigsaw puzzles, but but imagine that all the pieces uh, move, or if that's hard to conceptualize, um, think of it as basically like a GIF or a short video clip looping over and over, and then you just took all of the cut out all of the little parts of it with a jigsaw. So each part, it's like you have to match it up to where it would be as the thing keeps moving. Um, so it can be pretty hard at times. Sometimes it helps, sometimes it hinders it for the thing to be moving. Um, but uh, I think I've got a whole review up of that one by now, so you can check that out. Because I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure I at least streamed the game. And I'm pretty sure I played through the whole thing and put the review up. So there should be a review on it. It's a, it's a weird one. And I got it because... It had Japanese women in it, and I'm me, so... I think it was like a dollar or something. <clears throat> I'll save that mention. Uh, I got Nightmares from the Deep 2. 
The Siren's Call, and Nightmares from the Deep 3, Davy Jones, both of which are, um, like, hidden object, uh, point-and-click kind of games. Uh, I keep winning those on, they're pretty easy to win, I think there's a lot of them you see given away in, like, bundles and stuff on Steam a lot. Um, or on Steam Gifts, so I want it there. Uh, I think I want them both at the same time, it looks like. Uh, I haven't really played any of these yet, so I think I was probably waiting till I have, you know, the first one. Maybe unless I already do. I don't know. Um, not largely my cup of tea, but I'll enter anything that has cards. And, uh, if it's like the group giveaway and anything that I'm interested in, if it doesn't necessarily have cards, because I'll at least be able to get the cards and eventually maybe get to it and have chances of actually winning it versus, like, you know, I don't, I don't know. I haven't checked Steam Gifts in a while, and I should, but what can you do? Um, Icarus Combat Arena. Uh, I... No, sorry. Icons. Icons Combat Arena. And I think that one was in early access when I won it. Either that or I got it because it was free during early access stuff. But I'm pretty sure it was in beta, early access beta stuff. Um, because there's a lot of updates happening to it. And I don't remember if that's one that was supposed to be like Smash, uh, Super Smash Bros. Or if it's one that was supposed to be like, um, just, uh, totally different. And just the name made me think it would be like that. I just know I haven't actually gotten around to playing it, so... I don't remember. <laughs> Jamping. I do want to play more of this so I can review it, because there's not much of it there to review. Jamping is a game where, um, you're just a, a ball rolling down a hallway, basically. Um, it's like third person behind the ball of you, rolling down like this hallway continuously forward. And all you can do is hit a button to jump. And it seems to be almost random how high you jump. You have to make it through these gates to get points. But when you jump, a lot of times you jump way over the gates. Or sometimes there are gates where it's like a, it's like a hoop kind of thing. You have to be low enough to like jump into the line to get the points. Sometimes it's all like a hole. But you can also jump so high that you can jump over this stuff and not get the points for it. Um, you don't seem to get anything for getting points. Um, nothing really seems to change much. It's just moving left and right and jumping. Uh, and... Can time those jumps and that's it. And visually, the reason I got it is because it visually looked like I think I entered. I think I maybe won that one. Won it also. But I entered because even though it didn't have cards and it was group giveaway one, it was like well, it looked like like uh like straight up like Windows ninety five. Like look how awesome this three D is. It looks kind of like that where it's like everything is very basic, uh, vibrant colors. Very simple 3D looking, and uh, it, it looks like something that would be showing off like how awesome Windows 95 is or something like that, you know, like a machine like that. So, um, something about that tickled my fancy, and it, it sucks, but I think I streamed a little bit of it, at least the one night, so. <clears throat> There's that. Those two. Um, Kitsune Kitchen, I don't know what that is, but I won that. Um, Robo Encryption Zup. I also don't remember what that is. I remember the name being weird. And I think there's something weird with, like, the title of it and the cover art and, like, the store page all kind of has, like, different variations of the name, so I wasn't really sure what exactly it was. But I think that's all the Steam games, I think. So then I got some uh, digital stuff to mention here. Um, I got Super Mario Bros. Deluxe, which I have played through some, but I haven't played through all of it to review it yet. I'm somewhere in the middle of that and kind of stalled out, but I've got more things to do there. And so far, it's been pretty fun, where basically Super Mario Bros. Deluxe is uh, the original Super Mario Bros. put onto the Game Boy Color. Um, slightly different physics, and the screen is like, because it's small, the screen kind of scrolls around the screen a bit more. When you go up and down, left and right. Um, I think you can even go back a little bit. I don't think you can go all the way back. Maybe you can. I don't remember now. But you... 
you know, you can go a little bit forward and a little bit back because it's how much space you'd have on the full screen at the very least. I remember it at least did that much. Um, and uh, that it also has, like, a mode you can play where it's basically some of the lost levels, uh, levels or original Super Mario Bros. 2 levels are thrown in there. I think the physics are also slightly different in this game than they were in the originals. A little bit, so that can maybe throw you off a bit, but they're pretty close. Um, uh, also, it's, you can save during it, which is kind of cool. Save your progress. Um, there's also a, a, an awesome bonus mode where you can go in and replay all the levels. Um, and they'll put in like these red coins for you to find. They'll hide those throughout the level. There's a, a Yoshi egg, which I think only comes up if you find a, a new, a new hidden block. Um, this is a special collectible you have to really hunt for. Um, either that or maybe it's an existing hidden block. I'm not sure which, but just a way to help you find these hidden blocks. And then, um, then there's I think just a time, a time bonus for beating it in a certain amount of time. Uh, I think is one of them. Um, and I there's also like a there's like a score bonus. I think all of those are a thing. You like a score bonus. <clears throat> so yeah, you have to beat it. Like, you have to beat it quick enough. Or maybe there's not a time bonus, maybe it's just a score bonus. Um, but you get points for your time, so a lot of them you have to get all the stuff and get it in time. And you can do them separately or all at once, it doesn't really matter. Um, but some of them you kind of need to get those other items to get all those points. And one-ups are worth a bunch of points. So that mode is like awesome, and I'm... I really like that mode, even though I'm pretty bad at a lot of the levels. But uh, that's been fun. I'm gonna, I'm looking forward to reviewing that game. Um, I got that on the 3DS eShop, um, which is why I'm not holding it up or anything. <clears throat> what else? Um, oh, I got the the Binding of Isaac. Or no, wait, what is the other ones first? Before I mention that, pretend you didn't hear that startup yet. Oh, one of these is Mutant Muds Deluxe, which is also on Steam. Um, I'm pretty sure I bought that one on a sale, but um, it's like a platformer. Or I, I haven't finished that one either, but I played a good chunk of that. Where it's like you can you can duck and jump and shoot. Um, you get like this jetpack you can use. For a short amount of time, I think that was the thing you get right away, or maybe you have to pick it up as an item. It's been a while, I'm a little hazy on some of the details for some of these. Um, and every level has a bunch of coins you could collect, or these little simple things you to collect. Try to get all of those to beat it. Um, I think some of them have secret exits to go to secret levels. Um, and other secret things to collect, so it's interesting. Um, I was getting pretty addicted to it, because I was like, I'll just check this out, and then I was playing it for a while. Um, but I put it down, as is the horrible sin of game hopping. I haven't finished that, uh, or a lot of other games. So, uh, that's, uh, that's where that is. Um, <clears throat> anything back here? I want to kind of mention these strategically. So, one of the things I got was, um, I got Mega Man. This is, like, from eShop cards and stuff from, from Christmas. I think I used to get this. I got Mega Man, Dr. Wily's Revenge, because I... The physical one, I think my brother has. Um, I just let him keep that because I thought he would play it. Um, I don't remember who got it either, so I was like, well, I'll just let him hold on to that. Um, so I got that on 3DS now. Um, and, uh, I mean, I haven't played it on there, but I, you know, I just wanted to have it so I had all of them. So now I have all of the Game Boy Mega Man games on 3DS Virtual Console, so that's cool. Um, I can play those whenever I want. Um, and I got, uh, Mega Man Zero on, uh, Mega Man Zero, and I also got Mega Man in base on, um, Wii U Virtual Console, again, I wanted to get more Mega Man stuff, so it's like, well, this would be good. Um, Mega Man Zero was kind of just like, well, I haven't played any of the Mega Man Zero games for ages. I remember playing a little bit of a couple of them. A long time ago, those are Game Boy Advance games, and um, I was like, "Well, I'll get this to try it out." 
So if I like it, there's a couple others I can get on there. If I don't, whatever. And then there's also, um, so I don't really know much about what they're like. I remember the other, the ones I played being really hard, but, uh, that's kind of Mega Man in general, I feel like. Um, that Mega Man at base, um, I got, because that's where you get it also, it's an also a Game Boy Advance game, it originally came out on the Super uh, Famicom, and then we didn't get it until like years later on, on a Game Boy Advance port, and I had it a long time ago, but it's one of those I got rid of, because again, I didn't, I wasn't very good at it, didn't really like it, and I started playing a little bit of that recently, and that's fucking hard, <laughs> it's really hard, um, so, that's fun. Um, you can play as either Mega Man or Base, and it's like Base. Like Mega Man plays like Mega Man, but Base plays like he has a double jump, uh, and he has a dash instead of a slide, so he can't like get any lower clearance when he does that, but he's got like a boost of speed, and like he can jump when he does the dash to clear distances, I guess. And he can shoot in like seven directions. He can't shoot directly downwards, so seven directions, and then he can shoot um, like, a, like a rapid fire if you hold the button down. Um, but, um, to be honest, out of his shots are really weak. So bosses have been really hard to fight as him. Um, just because he's so weak, it was hard to beat the first, uh, boss. Of the, you start with, like, basically you go through a tutorial stage, then there are, like, three that open up, and depending on the ones you're beating, like, they open up the access to other bosses, kind of like a weird, like, tree kind of thing going out as you do it. So it's kind of weird so far. Um, and really hard, but, uh, I might be able to get through it, especially since it's on Wii U, so. If I need to, I can, uh, be a little cheater with save states, because I'm not very good at video games, and those will maybe help me. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. Um. Uh, before I mention these other couple of them, I'm gonna quick get the lights here. And I don't know, I didn't rewatch my previous um, updates, so I don't know if you saw. I'm pretty sure I, I do remember doing, that was a while ago for a couple of those games, showing a few of those. And I don't know if you saw, I got Star Fox Zero. Um, so, I do have Star Fox Zero, which came with Star Fox Guard. Um, I guess I could show that just in case I didn't, because I don't know if I got that after the last update, or if it was just before. So I'll grab it just to be safe. Some of the stuff I think I've had since my birthday or Christmas, and I think I showed off some of it, but, um, but I'm pretty sure you saw Hyrule Warriors Legends by now, you probably saw I had Monster Hunter Generations, but I got, well, I don't want to take all this out, it's going to be a pain in the ass, I try to do that, isn't it? But here it is, Star Fox Zero, um, it was, I don't know the price I got it, I guess, but it was pretty cheap, I got it at GameStop, but I think it was, oh, it's on the back, doesn't say how much it was on the back, though. At least the front sticker came off, I guess. Um, I want to say this was like, I don't even know if it was, if it was 20. I think it might have been about 20 bucks or so, but it was, it's got Star Fox uh, Zero and Star Fox Guard in it, like it says down there. So, um, I played a little bit of it. I didn't quite make it through the Andros fight at the end of the main campaign even just once yet, so I've got a lot more to go before I go about trying to review this thing. 
wasn't real impressed with it so far, from what I've played. Some of the stuff was cool, but it can be kind of hectic and busy. Um, I like that it's, um, like, the controls are, like, tough, but I, don't, I feel like it's just me needing to adapt to them more. I'm not, I'm not jumping immediately, immediately on that train of, like, I don't like using the gamepad, because you can kind of get around it, for one thing, and also, I think the way that the stuff that it adds to use the gamepad in that interesting way, that like helps a lot actually. It makes it feel less like just reskinning Star Fox 64 again, which they did on the 3DS basically, so. Yeah, it's uh, it, it's cool. Um, a little, a little annoyed with some of the, how much they're like, hey, remember Star Fox, but like, um, so far, some neat stuff in here, um, and I really like the way they did, um, like, there's a lot of times in these levels where it's, like, in the missions, like, you have to do a specific thing or whatever, it's like, if you do this thing, you kind of unlock this route, and there's, like, two, maybe three things you can do to unlock these different routes, and it never feels like, oh, I just failed to do my thing, like, I guess you did, but, like, you know, even if you fail, the, the way they weave it into the way the the pacing is going and the way the situations are happening, no matter what you do, it feels like it was kind of supposed to happen, like it feels very seamless, um, and it's just like, wow, like, okay, like, we gotta go do this now because of the situation, and like, we just keep moving, and it, ju it just keeps going, and so I never really feel that much like, oh man, I messed up, and now everything's screwed up, um, <clears throat> you only really feel that way once you know that you're trying to do a specific thing, and you don't get it in time, and you want to restart it. Um, so I think it's really cool how it manages to keep that flow and that pacing really well. Um, that part was really cool. Um, we got a smaller one here that I found at. I think it was at the machine shed was was what the place was called, I think. It was kind of like a little like shop. Um, that had, uh, it had actually some arcade games and stuff in there, um, most of which were, when we went, at least, were broken. <laughs> um, they just, like, weren't working properly, which was a bummer. But they had some games sitting there, and I was like, well, I want to get something, and I don't know what. And I settled on Banjo Pilot. And this is basically, like, I've only played a bit of it. Um, it's kind of like Diddy Kong Racing, which I'm not a big fan of in the first place but with uh, Banjo characters, uh, it, it, it is that. Uh, so if you like Diddy Kong Racing and you like Banjo-Kazooie characters, you'll probably like this. Uh, it's really similar in a lot of ways. And it's doing some neat stuff, but it's just like not really my kind of game, so I've been, been sitting on it, been sleeping on this one a lot. I'm just like, well, I'll eventually get through it so I can review it, because I love Banjo-Kazooie, and it's a Banjo-Kazooie game I can play. I'll get there. I'll get there. That's another one I did just get uh, for Christmas. And then she'll just see if it's in that case. Okay, it is. Good. Good. It is Super Paper Mario, a, a Nintendo Selects version of Super Paper Mario. I don't really care. If it's Nintendo Selects or not, that would, if anything, it just makes it cheaper, which is probably good. Because I'm guessing this was, uh, probably, there's another price tag on it. I would assume this was probably, like, I think when I saw it in the, in the store, when I was looking last, it was, like, maybe 10 or 15 bucks or something. It's pretty cheap anyways, um, because it's, like, a used one also. And, uh, with the way we prices keep, we games are starting to kind of go up there again a little bit. I'm kind of surprised is it would be cheap. Um, I played a bit of this uh, a while ago, back before my Wii broke, actually. I was playing this, and I never finished it. And I was liking it a lot, because it basically does like this thing of like... It's kind of like a, a Metroidvania-ish kind of thing, almost, where it's like 2D platforming for most of it. Um, and you're fighting things, but like you get experience for fighting things, so like you level up as you're killing stuff, and then you get stronger. So they try to keep the RPG elements of the previous Paper Mario games um, uh, with this different kind of style. And they also do this thing a lot where you can switch from 2D to 3D. And basically it's like, 
turns the camera for you, then you can like look straight ahead and move around and stuff. Um, kind of, kind of like that. Um, and it's like, so the glare gets off it. And so like, it's, it was really cool. Um, I remember putting so like a good amount of hours into it. Um, and the writing, I remember being the writing being pretty cool. So after playing Paper Mario on N64, I really got a hankering to play this again. And once I got a, you know, like a Wii U, I was like, well, this is one of those games to watch out for, so I could get it. Um, so and it was on, I was it was on my Christmas list, so it was nice to see this pop up. So I'm definitely gonna play that. Um, and also, I also need to finish Super Mario RPG, and also Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga. I've got a lot of Mario RPGs to, to blast through still, so that's a, that's a hot, um, that's a hot line of games to, to be hitting. The other thing I was going to mention here, um, kind of leads us into the next thing I want to talk about as well for this. So I've got The Binding of Isaac Rebirth on the 3DS, but as you know, um, uh, what you've done on The Binding of Isaac, um, it's kind of like a top-down 2D shooter. Um, has a lot of square rooms mostly that you go into that's like, you know, almost like a Zelda dungeon. And um, <clears throat> every floor has a bunch of rooms and then a boss. And you get power-ups and stuff and you use keys to open doors and bombs to blow stuff up. and uh, and whatnot, and there's a lot of power-ups you can get. I uh, usually at least get one power-up, usually, per floor. And, uh, it's a roguelike, so you need to go and you don't know what kind of power-ups you're gonna find. Um, you don't necessarily know what they're gonna do until you grab them. Um, and so, it's a lot of trying to do runs through there, and see how far you can get, and there's a whole bunch of stuff there. It's awesome. If you haven't played it, you definitely should. Reviews should be coming at some point. Because I still have the original one on Steam, and I have this now on 3DS, and I had it on Wii U already. But it's because it's only available on new 3DS, the new variants. Um, it's a funny story about that is uh, my old 3DS busted. Um, or it didn't really break, I guess, but the battery crapped out on me out of nowhere. It was fine, it was fine, and then like one day I... I turned it on and like it felt like the battery died really quickly. It went into the you know to the red low battery thing. I was like that's weird. It must more time must have gone by than I thought. Um, and the next day I remember having a similar issue though when I turned it on. Like it seemed like the battery might be might be screwed because again it seemed really fast. And then like the next day I think after I had it off most of the day, I turned it on and what I did was. I played it and it was about 20 minutes or so and then it was already like dead. So the battery was shot out of nowhere. I don't know why. Just eventually, it wasn't like gradual, like it's losing its charge. It was just like, no, it just isn't working very well now at all. So I could use it as long as I still kept it plugged in, but that kind of defeats some of the purpose of a 3DS. Um, and it's like, do I want to, I would wait until like, for like Black Friday sales and stuff. I tried to open it all just to see if I could switch the battery out and do something with the battery to see if it was Something weird with it. I couldn't open it. You need a special screwdriver to open it. I don't have any that would fit that, so that sucked. Um, then, uh, I was like, well, I don't know. I could order a kit online or something and do that. I don't know. What I thought I was going to do was like, okay, well, I, I feel like Black Friday stuff went shopping for that. And it's like, okay, well, I'm going to look for a cheaper thing for that. Like, try to find a used 3DS for cheaps. There really wasn't any that were that cheap, um, and so it was like, well, I could get a used, like, and there's like a, you know, I could get a 2DS, but I don't want a normal 2DS because it, those are kind of like bulky, you can't shut them, they're not, you know, they're just not very, the design isn't very good, if you're asking me personally. <laughs> uh, and so I decided to get, um, and you'll see that soon, a, a new... Uh, a new 2DS um, because those uh, don't have the 3D, so they're a little cheaper anyways. So they were on a bit of a sale because it was Black Friday, uh, and it would have cost me like a few bucks more, I think, to get a new one <clears throat> versus a used one. Also, I saw they had a used new 3DS, but I don't use the 3D. Uh, it was kind of spendy, and also the, that thing is really big. So, um, you know, I, I got this, 
and it comes with Mario Kart 7 because that's the only one they had on there was the one that was preloaded with Mario Kart 7 which man, I basically had to pay a little bit more just to get it with that and not get a used one I was like whatever um, I'll just do that and because it has a better battery anyway so that's nice um, and just oh, all kinds of stuff we'll get we'll get to we'll get to the showing that off in a minute here but uh, I put the bullet on that and now I can play some of these other games like Binding of Isaac which is one of those games that I was like if, there aren't too many that are like exclusive to the new 3DS really for that so that was one of them I thought would be really good to have on there and so I really wanted to get that and I ended up getting it um, to really break that in and so far it's it runs better than it does on Wii U um, it seems like it's a lot faster um, I haven't noticed there's still some hiccups here and there but I've heard that it was terrible and I think they patched a lot of stuff that was bad about it and so now it works like really well and there's no DLC on it they don't have the after afterbirth DLC or anything certain things that I think might still cause problems but it so far it's been pretty good so I don't really, I can't complain too much um, and along with that I also got um, Mega Man X so I can dive into the X series proper and I could get that on Wii U also but I got it on on uh, 3DS uh, because I have the new 3DS now so you can do Super Nintendo games on there too uh, and Mega Man X is, is great I don't think I really need to talk much about Mega Man X it's like Mega Man stuff you've seen it and also uh, although I don't know if I'd like it as much as Mega Man Extreme or Extreme 2 just because I played those first those might always just I might always just kind of prefer those because I played them first but then I uh, also got Mega Man 7 so I can't play 8 um, yet or 9 or 10 on my systems right now but at least I can go up to 7 so it's progress you know um, and uh, again I could have got that on Wii U but I wanted it on there so I could take advantage of that so now basically anytime there's any Super Nintendo games I want to play I'm pretty much just going to get them on my uh, 3DS um, instead of the Wii U um, I, kinda, I almost rebought Super Metroid I didn't um, I did beat Mega Man 7 already by the way so that that's review is coming but I didn't get Super Metroid yet I'm still kind of torn on what I want to get with the last of my eShop funds right now from gift cards or whatever I've got enough to maybe I, I don't know exactly what I'm gonna get maybe an NES game but maybe Super Ghouls and Ghosts because that game is great uh, it seems like a lot of fun and I'd like to play it more to maybe someday beat it uh, Super Metroid would also be awesome I'm also thinking I'm, I'm kind of leaning towards getting um, on Wii U getting uh, uh, Super Mario Bro Super Mario Advance 4 Super Mario Bros 3 because, yeah, I mean, that's not going to be portable then, but I have actual NES Super Mario Bros. 3 on, uh, on 3DS already. So if I get that there, if that comes with the e-reader levels, like, loaded in, then that would be really cool to check that out. Plus, then just playing it with a different coat of paint and whatnot, and seeing the changes in the levels and everything would be kind of bonus stuff to do and justify it being having the extra copy on the Wii U while I already have the original there, so that's that's uh, probably what I'm leaning towards. And uh, just to show this off a little bit, I got the nice. This is the box. What happened was also basically now I have to sell my Mario Kart copy. I don't have to, I guess, but um, I didn't really like. There's probably something you have to do with the data to save it, and uh, I didn't. So, that's this. Um, it basically just like, yeah, all my data for Mario Kart 7 is like gone and I have to redo it, which is like, whatever, it's Mario Kart, I'll just play it again and get that stuff back. It wasn't like it was necessarily that hard, it's just, I had to do it. And I even restarted Super Smash Bros. a little while ago after completing all that stuff, so like, this is something if when I want to pick it up and play it again, it's something to do. And this way, since it's just like, on the card or whatever, it's preloaded, so that now it's like that I have a bigger memory card now too. It's like, well, now I just always have Mario Kart on me if I want to just play it whenever. So that's not that's not too terrible of a thing. <clears throat> um, 
didn't take advantage of any great, great awesome deals uh, for buying some of those things that were on sale on anything. Like DuckTales Remastered was uh, tempting for like let under four bucks or whatever, but it's like, I don't know. But yeah, look at that. Like, it doesn't, I, actually, I guess I thought the top was uh, a solid color, like, or not a solid color. I thought the top was flat, but I see like, these like grooves on it. Um, so that was kind of like, oh, that's weird. I thought it was just like a flat, like, color, or a flat uh, surface, but actually having the grooves means it doesn't show smudges as much, um, and also, like, gives you a little bit of grip for, you know, handling things so it's kind of slippery, and I like, I do really like, like, the little outline with the blue. These things will look really slick, um, I could probably just make an entire video talking about this, because I upgraded from my old... Uh, regular 3DS. Um, biggest downside to this is probably the fact that it's so big. You know, it's bigger than the other 3DS. In fact, let me just take that out. Actually, no. I'm not going to take it out because it's kind of sandwiched in there, I think. Well, let's look. Let's see how hard it is to take out. I haven't done one of these in a while. It'll be a nice big video. Big, meaty video game update. Oh, it probably happens right here. Charger is the same charger too, but I took that out. You see, you see, like this one has like the flat color top, but it's like it's got that. And basically, I still have this, so if I want to or if I need to back up, like it's still here. I could sell it also, I guess, but but like that's that, and it's like you know, these are the two, like like look how much bigger. It's not a good way to hold that, is there? <laughs> there. So it's like, it's, it's, it's maybe negligible, you know, negligible size difference, but um, I just wanted to show that because just so you can see for reference. <laughs> um, meanwhile, uh, Game Boy Advance uh, SP Compared to this, even, it's just like, oh, look how tiny, like how tiny this thing is. Handhelds are getting bigger, consoles are getting smaller, I don't know. app tries to steal that new 2DS is going to be in for a rude awakening. So it's been a really big, you know, leap to go from like the the first variant of the thing to the newest variant. There's a lot of changes. Um, but yeah, like the having the thinner screen is nice. Like I, I, this, like this is pretty light. I think it's even a little lighter than that one. Um, it's got a better processor, so stuff loads faster or is supposed to. It can also run more things, but obviously like Super Nintendo games. For some reason you couldn't run those on that, I don't know why, on the old one. And also like, yeah, like Buying of Isaac and there's a couple others. Um, so like, I've noticed very slightly faster load times in some things. Not a huge, huge deal, but just a nice little perk. Um, looks, I just like the really nice trim on that. The buttons are lit up with that. Um, you get the extra shoulder buttons for functions that I don't think I've really used in any game yet because I haven't needed them, but for when I want to and they're, you know, will be necessary or something or useful, that will be cool to use those. Um, and they feel, they just feel nicer too. They're a little bigger and these are, you know, a little, the quality of them feels a little better. <clears throat> we'll say this knob up here is kind of weird. I guess they wanted to put, uh... The, I don't know, just for the hatch, maybe the hatch is better. I've heard people had problems with the previous one where like it was breaking on them when they were opening it or closing it, but like this is fine. Um, 
it just it kind of unsightly to have this up here. Um, and uh, uh, also weirdly here too, it's like, well here's the power button, I like that, it's also a, a lighter color there. Um, and again, light indicator, all the light indicators are on the outside here, so when it's closed you can see the light indicators down here for online uh, charging and for power if it's on or off. Um, the stylus actually comes out of the bottom now, uh, which is, and it doesn't extend like the other 3DS one, so um, I never used it extended anyway, so that's fine. Um, I'm still trying to get, you know, this is some adjusting, like getting used to that being down here, not up here. Um, I've reached up there a couple times for nothing. Um, the volume slider is on the side there. That's pretty much all that's on the side. So there's no switch for the online. You have to go into the menu and turn an online on and off, which is um, less convenient if you want to turn it on and off a lot. But since I usually leave it on anyways, if I wanted to turn it off or switch it back on, I probably would just go to the menu. It's actually not that bad. And, and this way you don't accidentally bump the, the volume. Um, <clears throat> volume. The online switch, which is so I feel like it would disconnect you if you were online. Like it's not a thing you won't have to worry about. Um, charger still goes back here, but the games don't go back here anymore. Um, the games. Uh, oh, there's an infrared thing over here. And the games, uh, now I'm going to this weird slot. Oh yeah, headphones, I think we're always up here, but the headphone jack's up here. Um, the game's going to this weird slot in here. This is a thing I don't really like that much, but it makes some sense. So, it's got this little tray you gotta pull out, and then you can put that, and your SD card goes in there, rather than a weird thing on the side. Um, feels like it is maybe less secure there, but... Maybe that's just me. Um, and the game is like in there. That's the game. It's like, I think Hyrule Warriors Legends is what I still have in there. Chipping away at that. So when you don't have a game in, this little flap is nice too. Um, um, this kind of feels awkward to open it up, and I'm worried about it breaking off. But like, it feels uh, nice too. <laughs> like, I guess have that closed then if you don't have a game in so that it's like you won't get any dust in there or anything. Um, and you won't bump the game or anything if it's there rather than on the back where you can actually like touch it, I guess. Um, so, if you're leaving a game in for a while anyways and not switching out a bunch, it's not a big deal. Um, <clears throat> and these things on the front here like this, and this, these are the speakers. This is a problem because um, the other speakers and the other one are in like the, the top screen, so when it's opened up you would have it basically facing towards you. Um, but in here, since they're on the bottom there, it's like, if you have it next to your body like this, you know, sometimes even if you're just holding it, like, if your hand goes down here, like, you might actually cover the speaker a bit with your hand when you're holding it, um, if you, if you put it, like, near your palms, like that, um, uh, it's easy enough to remedy, just don't put it in positions, you know, like right next to you or something, you know. If I, I would have it more towards my gut that you can't see that on cam. <laughs> uh, yeah, well it's like, that's a bit of a annoyance, but it's very mild, it doesn't really break most of the system anyways, it's not a huge deal. Um, and again, you can do headphones if you want, so you could probably remedy that if you really wanted to. Um, <clears throat> open it up, and it's amazing. It also looks really slick on the ends, it's all dark, but it's like, I love that like the pad and like the little like control things are lit up like that, like with, or not lit up, but they're, um, you know, you the camera is in the middle here, but that they're a different color, <laughs> so I got distracted in the middle of that thought. Um, yeah, very shiny, very shiny. Um, there's a lot of screen space because there aren't speakers on the sides of it and because like, yeah, no 3D indicator, the screen is just like, it's huge, all screen space. So it's a much bigger screen for not that much bigger of a system, really, when you consider how much bigger the screen is, too. And up here, they did this really smart thing where instead of having that stupid panel with, like, basically three different buttons and this, like, plastic over them, so you just kind of push on this plastic that's over where a button is, and you're kind of trying to find where it is in this vague, these vague rectangles. They took that out so there's more screen space for the bottom screen. Um, um... So basically, yeah, the start and selector push down here. I kind of wish these were a different color, and the, and the home button, I wish they were the color of these things so they would stick out more. 
especially in the dark. But like, yeah, start and selector down here, which is nice, um, kind of like you'd expect. And a uh, home button's going to push to this side, actually. So that's kind of nice, like it's in that same kind of spot for the other hand. So it's nice that they kind of separate them so you can be like, yeah, it's not the one that's by itself or on the side you usually expect these to be. So that's really nice. Um, a lot nicer than the other things they had before, though for a long time I was still hitting, they like, accidentally hitting like near the middle of the system here because I was like, where is the, but well, there's no buttons here anymore. So like, some adjusting. Um, the pa like, yeah, all this stuff, like the, the pad, it feels awesome. It's a bigger D-pad and it's like flatter and it just feels really nice. These buttons feel nice too. They're a little softer plastic, they're a little uh, bigger buttons. Um, the, the circle pad's pretty similar. Maybe it's just not as used, but it feels a little softer uh, than the other one did, less plasticky. Um, <clears throat> so all this stuff just, just feels a lot like better quality than the other one. It doesn't hurt my hand as much to use this D-pad or uh, mess around with the buttons. And then um, this uh, little control nub, I'm still not entirely certain of how much pressure or anything to give to it. It doesn't seem like it has a lot of give. It's weird. I've tried it a little bit in a few things, but nothing has really necessarily required it. It's just been like a, an extra thing I can do, and it's been kind of neat for a couple of games to move the camera a bit or to... I think I tried using some Smash moves in Smash Bros. with it. So it's okay, um, but um, whatever. Um, it's not probably not something it's like the extra shoulder buttons. I'm probably not necessarily going to use that a whole bunch, just on a case by case basis. When it's like that's a really good thing to do, I'll do that. Um, and uh, that's that. That's that was a that's thing we've been pretty excited about and messing around with. Um, A couple other video game related things I'll show here in a minute. Putting these back makes for good sounds anyways, right? paper anymore either. Just because I know my camera battery is rough, I want to get as many of these things done before unplugging my camera to move it to show off uh, one of the things as possible. So, so uh, this is just a little bullet bill I got um, with got candies in them. It's got blue raspberry candy sours, so I probably will eat those because I like blue raspberry and sour candy. So that sounds pretty good to me, and then it'll be just a nice little prop to have up. I still have things in my Zelda container, I think, that I didn't eat. They're like orange things. I wonder if those are any good anymore. I'll find out eventually. Then I got... Uh, I got blood, sweat, and pixels here. Uh, by Jason Schreier. And it says on the front even, the, the triumphant, turbulent stories behind how video games are made. And they list a bunch of video games, including the stories behind Diablo 3, Destiny, The Witcher 3, Halo Wars, Uncharted 4, Shovel Knight, Star Wars 1313, uh, Pillars of Eternity, Dragon Age Inquisition, and Stardew Valley. I have not heard of Star Wars 1313, so I don't know what that is. 
Um, I don't really know much about what Halo Wars is, I don't think, but I have an idea. And I, uh, actually, I don't know if I know what Pillars of Eternity is either, but I've at least heard of most of these other ones. And uh, I'm sure it'll be interesting to hear about that stuff uh, in here, uh, because I like video games, and hearing stuff behind the scenes that you wouldn't necessarily just hear about, you know, um, without going into specifically to look at all those, that could be uh, some pretty interesting stuff. So that was a cool thing I got for Christmas also. Um, And yeah. Oh. Okay. I didn't realize he was uh, that famous. I don't. Uh, I don't keep up on some of this. Apparently, J Jason Schreier is um, is the news editor at Kotaku. So um, maybe I should have heard of him then. That's uh, that's on me. I don't follow things very well, do I? Um, but that'll be that'll be cool to check that out. I may even do. I don't know if I can really read a book on on a YouTube video. If that's going to be a problem, if I read that out loud. Uh, maybe if I just read through it and do the page turning sounds that way, you'll still want to get the book. Maybe. Uh, we'll see. Another anyway, book. Uh, I got is the encyclopedia, oh, sorry, the Super Mario Bros. Encyclopedia. Encyclopedia is at the end of Super Mario Bros., not the, the official guide, which you don't really need a, a guide to play Mario, but it's going to be really cool to check out all of this stuff and, like, see the interesting, like, pieces of information and, like, see the artwork and everything inside of here. Um, this is just insane. Um... <clears throat> Celebrate the first three decades of one of gaming's most beloved franchises with Super Mario Bros. Encyclopedia, the official guide to the first 30 years. Whether you grew up with the original or picked up a controller later in the series, enjoy over 256 jam-packed pages of content, including information on enemies, characters, and courses, even explanations of glitches and helpful hints. That will be kind of cool to see some of those in there, if, they, if they're ones I don't know about, like, you know. Everybody knows about World Negative One or whatever, and 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 one. There's a few that people kind of already know. But it'll be interesting to see some that I maybe necessarily don't know, especially in Mario 64. I bet there's some interesting stuff there that I've never found out about just from playing it. <clears throat> from pixels to polygons, relive all the best moments for the first 30 years of Super Mario Bros. series. Say that must be 86. It must be up to like 2016 then, about, right? Cause think, or 2015 maybe? Did it come in 85 or 86? No, I don't know. Does it say in here? Really quick see? Oh yeah, it does say 1985, so in the first one. Okay, so probably until 2015, so... Um, I'm guessing, uh, well, some of the newer ones, they won't have as much content just because some of the stuff hasn't unearthed yet anyways, but I mean, they're probably, what would the last one be? If they're doing all of them and not just the main series, that would be harder to say, but it's not going to have any, like, Odyssey's not going to be in there. At least both the galaxies will be, and 3D World might even be in there. That'll be interesting. That'll, uh, that'll be probably, uh, Half, half of a, it's like half a read and half a look, really, but that's cool. Um, and then, now I gotta bring this over. <clears throat> Holy shit, I didn't realize this video was that long. I think I gabbed about the, I think I talked about the, the new 2DS. Uh, sorry, new 2DS XL. Uh, I don't think there. I don't know if there even is a new 2DS that isn't XL. But uh, longer than I thought. And those. Uh, this other thing I got was pretty cool. The NES Classic Edition. Apparently, they're discontinuing this too. So it's like, well, it's cool that I got one now. Um, and uh, 
you know, you guys have probably already seen this and heard about this thing. It is very small. I'm going to probably bring the camera over and show it. Comes with this controller as well. Apparently something I didn't know when I looked it up, and I guess I haven't tried it either yet. But apparently you can sync like a Wii Remote and like a Wii Classic controller or something. There's a few things you can sync with that to play as like a um to play as like a second player, I think. Um I think it only works as the second player if you put those in. So you'd still need the controller that comes with it. But if you want your two player and you don't have another controller, since this only comes with one, you can get extra ones, but it only comes with one. Um there you go. Um <laughs> and uh I mean, this is cool because like a lot of these I don't have. I don't necessarily want to get a bunch of them on all on my 3DS or Wii U. Like I could. Some of these, maybe I think all of these are on there. Maybe not. I think so. Um, but uh, yeah, nice back there, like all that stuff they're advertising. This is this is a high this is a high quality. This is all leave up on Yammerin. This is a high quality plug and play system. If you don't know, this is basically just you know like. You put an HDMI cord from this thing into your TV, and, and then plug it into the wall, and then you're playing. You know, like it's it's super simple, and like it's a shame that like a lot of people aren't necessarily like now. By now, maybe they're starting to, but it's a shame a lot of people couldn't get this right away because it got scalped to high hell because of the low supply. Now they're just continuing it, and that's going to be kind of a shame, but. So I kind of hope I can get a Super Nintendo Classic at some point too, because there's a lot of ones on there that would be really fun to play. But, um, <clears throat> you know, I don't know. So, uh, <laughs> I'm not going to be super torn up if I don't. I was cool enough to get even one of them. Um, let's see. So the games I have, uh, Balloon Fight, I've played that before. I've never, I don't think you can, be, I don't think there's an end to Balloon Fight. I don't think you beat Balloon Fight, so I've played Balloon Fight before. I like that one. Um, I'm not going to explain what all these games are to you, but I just wanted to run down the list to give you an idea on this. Bubble Bobble, I've seen a lot of that. I never really played Bubble Bobble, though. So that would be a cool one to have on here. Castlevania, I have on Game Boy Advance, but this will be a better screen for it. Like if I want to play it on the TV, it's there. That'll be a fun thing to play. Um, Castlevania 2, Simon's Quest, I have that on my 3DS, but again, it might be kind of cool to play it on the screen. Um, if I want to play it there instead of on the handheld. Uh, Donkey Kong. I do have that on Donkey Kong 64, which is my best like a ROM hack. That's a little different than the NES one. Um, I think, or maybe it is just a ROM hack of the NES one with the one of the levels put in. The Pie Factory's put back in. The Pie Factory is not here. So I don't think I've actually, I don't know if I've actually played the NES version unless I had Donkey Kong on the NES Classics or Game Boy Advance. That'd be the only place I would have played it if I did. So that'll be kind of neat. <clears throat> Donkey Kong Jr., I've played some of that before, but again, I, I don't think I've, I think that one does have an end. I don't know if I've gotten through all the levels of Donkey Kong Jr. or not. Maybe via playing NES, uh, NES Remix, or Ultimate NES Remix, but like, I don't know if you would count that as the same kind of thing. I probably wouldn't. Um, Double Dragon 2, The Revenge. It looks, it almost looks like it's in a different font. I don't know if it's going to show up super well. But like, maybe it's just because it is in all caps, it looks weird. But it almost looks like it's in like a different font, like they had to put, I don't know. Why is there Double Dragon 2 and not the first Double Dragon? The first Double Dragon is really good. Not that Double Dragon 2 is bad, but it just seems weird to include the second one and not the first one. Which... <clears throat> Unless Double Dragon 2 is more iconic and beloved, I, d I guess I don't really know. I'm not a huge Double Dragon fan, so I don't really know. I'm more familiar with the Game Boy 1 of the first game, which is a hell of a lot easier than the NES one. That one is brutal, and the Game Boy 1 at least gives you a fighting chance. It's just kind of slow and not in color. Um, Dr. Mario, that's a cool game. I've I actually had a collection, that, or not a collection, this is like a two-pack thing on Game Boy Advance that had that, and it had Puzzle League, which are cool. Um, I don't have that anymore, I guess. 
but those are kind of cool. So I've played some Dr. Mario. I'm very, very bad at Dr. Mario. Um, so, um, it would be nice to play it a bit more, and then I can it'll be better for reviewing it, because I have a version of it now, which is on here, and I want to just mess around with some Dr. Mario, there you go. I'm just going to be bad at it, and also be frustrated that I'm bad at it. <laughs> Excite Bike. I guess, again, I, I technically have a copy of it via Excite Bike 64. Um, you can play the original Excite Bike and make your own. I think you can make your own tracks and save your own tracks on that one. They'll actually save. I don't know if these tracks will save on this one, or if you just have to make a suspend point and then have that be. It keeps saving all the tracks you make, or if you only make one track at a time. I, I don't really know how that works. But I've not really played much Excite Bike. I've never definitely never beat it or anything. So that'll be a cool one to go through. That Final Fantasy. This is probably. A, among the ones I'm most excited for on here, Final Fantasy, because it's like I played Final Fantasy IV Advance. Um, that was kind of cool, and I've, I want to get into Final Fantasy stuff uh, or try to some more of those. And I still want to play Final Fantasy VII. Um, I think that will be one I'll really enjoy because I like that time period, you know, that era of games. But I don't know what I'm going to play it on if I could get that to get that version, other than maybe Steam. If it runs on my computer properly, um, I guess Final Fantasy is all in all caps. Maybe it's just that it's all caps. It looked weird. The Double Dragon one, and because it's such a big title, um, yeah. Final Fantasy is like um, the first one. I've I've heard that it's like it, it can be kind of rough. It's probably gonna be pretty grindy, but it like I think I'm gonna like that it's in the 8 bit aesthetic and like it was just like the turn based stuff. I think I will be able to get into it. So I've been like really excited to play that and be like I, I and to, to hopefully have an experience be like I really liked this Final Fantasy rather than being like with Final Fantasy 4 and being like it was okay. Uh, Galaga. I'm not very good at Galaga. I believe that's the shooter. Do they have a picture of Galaga? That's cause that's the that's the space shooter. I get that mixed up sometimes with Galaxian, but I believe Galaga is the one where you shoot stuff, and you get multiple shots. That might be I don't know some of the rules for those I get confused on. I thought they were I thought both were Namco. Maybe they're not. Um, don't quote me on that. But Galaga is yeah. It's like. That should be okay. I'll be really horrible at it, but it'll be okay. Ghosts and Goblins. Uh, really excited about that one. I really like uh, Super Ghouls and Ghosts. Is, is such a fun game. And this one isn't... I played it a bit. This one isn't as um, fun. <laughs> it's a lot more difficult. But I still... I don't know. It's one of those two where... Like, I, I, for some reason, I'm not getting super pissed off at it when I'm playing. I'm like, you know, I'm still having fun with it. Uh, it's a It's a fun time. Um, I don't know that I'll ever, ever beat it, but, um, I think I'll have fun with it while I play it. You know, you just try hard to inch forward and get a little further get to the next checkpoint, and that'll be cool. Uh, one of the things, a few things on here that isn't followed with, uh, an R or a TM, uh, uh, Gradius. Shit. Is Gradius Konami? I want to say that's Konami, but I could be wrong. Regardless, uh, Gradius will be cool. It's a space shooter, which I'm really bad at. Nice space, space shooter, shoot 'em up thing, and I played a little bit of that uh, on the Switch Online when my brother brought that over. It's fucking hard, but uh, it's one of those where you just play it a bunch, you get better at it, and at least hope that that's what happens when you play. <laughs> That'll be fun. Uh, Ice Climber. I actually I do remember having this on. I don't know if I still have a little booklet for it anymore, but I did have the <clears throat> classic NES series Game Boy Advance port of it, and it is not very. Uh, it's it's fun, I guess. You know, I don't hate it. Um, at the time when I was playing it back then, I really hated it because <laughs> it's hard. Um, the jumping is kind of weird with your momentum. Um, you have to be very specific with the way you move and jump. 
and uh, a lot of times if your jump isn't just right, you don't make it. There's a really annoying thing where you fall through the platform. Like, it looks like you should still land on it, but because you weren't quite close enough, you just kind of go through the corner of it, so it doesn't look right, and so like you phase through the platform almost and don't land on it, and that's frustrating shit. But it's still fun. It's an arcade, a little, like, jumping up, trying to get to the things, thing, to the top. It's fun. Oh, Jesus, I, I totally forgot this was on here. Kid Icarus. That's going to be an awesome one to play. And now I'm excited about that. I totally spaced that that's even on this thing. Kid Icarus um, is kind of like Metroid, except possibly harder. So, um, it looks fun, and it looks like the kind of thing that if I really played it a bunch, I might actually really get into it. But, man, like, yeah, until now I haven't really had a version of it to play. I think maybe just that demo when Super Smash Bros. Brawl, where they let you like play a few minutes of a bunch of these games and be like, hey, check these out. And then I think they just want you to buy them in the virtual console shit anyways, but that's cool. Uh, Kirby's Adventure, I have played through that on back when I had a Wii. Um, and uh, funny thing with that was that I got uh, a Kirby Nightmare in Dreamland. Uh, and also, we also had Kirby's Dream Land before that. And then it was like, we got that. And it's like, look at this uh, other Kirby game that's on the virtual console on our Wii. Let's get that. <laughs> Not realizing that Kirby's Adventure um, was just what uh, Nightmare in Dreamland was a remake of. So a lot of it was seeming familiar until eventually at one point it was like, oh my god, this is the same game. God damn it. Um, it's got the 8-bit aesthetic at least, so that's kind of nice. I like that. Uh, I use, I like Nightmare in Dreamland more, but it'll be fun to also just have this, and again, want to play it on your TV. There you go. Um, so essentially I have a backup of it, and it's a really fun game too. Um, it's one of those where it's like, it's one of the few NES games that isn't punishingly difficult. Uh, so, it's pretty cool. Mario Bros. Before they were super. Uh, I, I actually, I, from replaying this a little bit more recently, um, I've actually been really liking it a lot, so I'm looking forward to just sitting down and putting some more time into it and eventually reviewing that. Um, seems like a pretty fun time, and I think it's packaged on most of, like, the, those, uh, those, uh, Super Mario Advance titles. I think you can just play, like, a version of that as, like, a bonus on all of them, too. But that's, like, with, like, updated visuals and stuff. Like, that's, like, pretty cool. Um, I don't know. I like it. It's one of the few arcadey type games that I was, I'm kind of into. Where a lot more of the most of the arcadey stuff, I'm like, eh. I get kind of bored of it right away, and I'm like, either I can't beat it, or it's just, it's not a game you can beat in general. So, uh, Mega Man Two of all the Mega Man games on the NES, all six of them, they picked two, and I understand. I understand. They weren't going to pick six. It was my it's my favorite of them, but they they weren't going to pick it because not that many people played six, and uh, it's not it's a huge fan favorite. They probably weren't going to go with four or five either for similar reasons. Um, <clears throat> and I was pretty sure they weren't going to put maybe in addition to, but uh, they weren't going to put the first one on there if they were only putting one game on there because the first one is really hard. A lot of people don't really care that much for the first one. And it's not as iconic as 2 or 3. I think 3 would have been a better pick. But it's quite possible that there are more people that like 2 than 3. I think it's close, but it might be... It might not be as close as I feel like it is. And I think 3 is better, but that's just that's just me, that's just me talking. It's very possible that most people would say 2 is better. So, they're both uh, really good. Um, so that'll be cool. I have Mega Man Legacy Collection, so I don't really need this, but it'll be kind of fun to also have it. And again, play it on your TV. This, a lot of these are like, I could just get this on my 3DS, but if I want to play it on the TV and not have to get it on the Wii U separately. Um, on here you're basically getting all these games for, what, like two bucks? This is like 60. Even if you're not counting the system and the controller and the cords and everything, that's like every game for two bucks versus eShops every game for like uh, five bucks. So, 
seeing some dough. Where are we? Oh yeah, Metroid. I have this as an unlockable on Zero Mission. I did have the NES, classic NES series version of it too, but uh, I got rid of that when I got Zero Mission uh, because it was an unlockable thing on there that I have. So if I want to play that, I could do it there. I could do it here. If I want to do it on the TV. And you know, if I, depending on whichever, depending on if I want to sit down, you know, relax, or maybe go out on the go, you know, whichever would be a better locale for playing a game that I'm never going to be able to beat. Uh, it's just, it's so hard. It's it's unforgiving. It does. It's just uh, it, if you die, they don't even start you with full health from your last checkpoint. You have to like grind up a bunch of health. It's I can't. I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe using suspend point stuff like using the same states, uh, it'll be manageable. So I don't have to refill my health every single time I die. But holy shit, holy shit, this game. Number 20, uh, speaking of games that I will never beat, Ninja Gaiden. That game is hard. It's cool. And it makes you feel cool when you play, but holy shit, that looks, that game looks hard. I, I watch people play this game that have played it a bunch of times. Still have a lot of trouble with it. I don't think I'm ever going to be able to beat it, but I'll, I'll certainly, um, I will, I will try that, because it looks like it'll be a lot of fun. I haven't really tried it properly for a long time. Pac-Man. I don't know that the NES version of Pac-Man is the best version. But regular Pac-Man isn't necessarily, you know, the most amazing game out there anyways. It's, it's fine. People know it. People get it. Um, at least it's a unique thing on here, but... I don't know. I, I think I'm probably going to end up playing that and be like, Hey, it's Pac-Man. And that'll probably be the extent of what I have to say about it. Punch Out featuring Mr. Dream because, of course, they can't use Mike Tyson anymore. Anyways, um, and they got a box. Most of these, I think, are just supposed to be pictures of the boxes, but the one for that one also says Classic Series Punch Out on it, so I don't know where they pulled up the picture of that box. I think all the manuals for these are online somewhere, too. You can, like, scan in it code and go to find all the manuals online so they didn't have to print anything for them. Um, probably never going to be able to beat Punch-Out either. I will try that. Um, I don't know if there really is a problem with lag or not on this thing. There might be. But like... I don't know. I don't know, man. Uh, Punch-Out is just a hard game anyways. And uh, I've never been that good at it. I've never really played that much or tried that hard at it, so, you know, you know, we'll see what happens. Uh, Star Tropics, that is one I really know so little about, and so I was really excited to jump into that. I think I heard something about it, like, I think I heard somebody do, like, a podcast about it. A group of people had, like, played it. I think it was Continue. I could be thinking of a totally different game, but I think the people, the guys at Continue... And they had a thing called Continue Cast, and that might still be up on the channel uh, on YouTube. Um, like I was saying on YouTube, I'm forgetting that this is just going to be on YouTube. Uh, I believe they did this game, and um, but it was like a thing they would do, like a, almost like a book club thing. But it's like you know they would all go and like play a game that month. And then come back with a bunch of notes and things to talk about about that game and just have like a discussion about it. And it was really cool. Um, and I think they're doing it again. I think they're doing it like, I don't know if they ever stopped or not. But they're doing it for for Patreon, I think. It's one of their things. And I think what they're doing is that they're putting it out later anyways. Like, I don't know if it's like a few weeks or like a month or something later. They're putting it out for everybody to see. But it's like a Patreon thing to get those when they come out. I don't think it's exclusive to that, but I don't remember exactly what they said. So, seeing more of those would be cool if they are doing those again, especially if I missed any. It was cool. But Star Tropics, yeah, it's like, uh, it's almost like a Zelda-esque kind of game. A lot of it feels like it's pulling from Zelda. And I think Star, and I feel bad I don't know, I think Star Tropics is, um, I think it is Nintendo. 
I think it is their IP. I don't know. I think there's a couple of Star Tropics games. Um, I think. I know very little about the series, and it's made it so appealing to me, too. And it's like, I want to play that. I was pretty much like, I vaguely know what little pieces of it, so like, I'm going to play that. And I started that up. So I'm on, on like, chapter three of playing that. Um, and it's, I don't know, it's really cool so far. It's been very interesting. It's been kind of tough, but so far it hasn't been so hard that I've given up or had to, like, I haven't had to, like, use an exploit or cheat or something. Uh, it's been okay. I haven't had to save Scummit yet, so that's okay. Uh, so I'm pretty excited to see where that one goes. Um, that was a, That's a big one. Uh, Super C. Again, I don't know if there's some kind of... Um, I don't know if there's some kind of rights thing or whatever. It seems like a lot of times they're talking about that. It's like, you get Super C, but not Contra. I don't know why you get Super C and not Contra, because most people know Contra and like Contra. But like this, and I think even the virtual console stuff, you don't have the first one, you just have Super C. So I don't know why that is. Uh, I don't know why they ever called it Super C in the first place. Maybe there was some problem with the word Contra, or I don't know if that somebody else has some kind of stake in that, or they can't use it. I don't know. But Super C is cool too. Um, I'd be interested to see if I am even able to beat it by myself. Um, but it seems like that'd be a fun one to try because I did really li I liked playing it co-op and I liked Contra even though I only beat the first Contra with the code uh, once. I never beat it without the code yet, um, and I <laughs> I believe I put in the Contra code or Konami code, whatever. I put in the code, and I do think I got one game over, but I did beat it. I didn't get a complete I didn't get a complete game over. Run out of continues so. Then we got Super Mario Bros, Super Mario Bros. 2, and Super Mario Bros. 3. So I can play Super Mario Bros. 3 on the TV now, also if I want to play the original one on the TV, that's cool. And the first Super Mario Bros, and now I have a version of that that's the actual original Super Mario Bros. Rather than like Deluxe is on the go, I guess, but like that's kind of a tweaked version of it. Um, so it'll just be fun to have that. I played a little bit of that just to test the thing to see if it was working right and everything. That was cool. Um, it seems to work fine, so Super Mario Bros, you, know, you don't need too much there. Super Mario Bros 2 is really cool because I really liked, uh, I thought the game was cool, um, in general. And the Game Boy Advance version of it was like Super Mario Advance, it was the first one of those, was Super Mario Bros 2. And I, which I think they did that because they were going to do the, the first Mario was going to be part of the classic NES series. But they did this as the American Super Mario Bros 2, um, uh, or North American or whatever, and so it's like, um, yeah, you can see the little box on the back there. It's in the shot, it's in the frame. I can't see the box in my face. Hopefully you saw it. Uh, and it's like, uh, that version on the Game Boy Advance was cool because it added in these extra coins for you to find in the levels, and it's like, find all the bonus coins. Like, that was really cool. I liked that. I didn't really like the redesign of the sound and visuals, though. And that was the same thing I don't really like about the All-Stars pack. It's just that it's cool to have the games all in this package and, like, have them all in one place. But I don't like the redone visuals and audio in those games. I, Because I'm not a big fan of the 16-bit aesthetic and whatnot in general. So those always felt a little, like, muddier and kind of gross. Whereas I really like the sharpness of the NES and, um... So this will be really cool to have that and play that one. Um, that's another one I'm pretty excited about playing. Um, and then Tecmo Bowl. Not really interested. I am I'm going to. I'm, I, I can probably probably have mentioned this. I am going to play all of these. Um, but yeah, Tecmo Bowl. I'm not real excited about. Don't really give a shit about football. And it might be fun. But it might be confusing. I don't know. I've never watched it and thought this looked like it was a really fun time. So I'll see how it goes. It might be one that's really only fun with two people also. Just because you're competing, that kind of thing. And that will be a shame if I don't have somebody to play with when I do that. But it happens. <clears throat> uh, Legend of Zelda. And of course, uh, I mean, that's great. 
I have that on Game Boy Advance. Uh, I have played that, I think... I don't know if I beat it on the NES. I may have gone to the last dungeon and then not beaten it. And then I've uh, not... I, I, I definitely have beaten the Game Boy Advance Classic NES series uh, cart. Um, so that'll be fun. I still have to finish the side quest of that as well. So I should do that sometime. And then... Um, but nice to have it to play it again, play it on TV. That's a, a good one. I would I would play again. I I, I play it every now and then. And then Zelda Two: The Adventure of Link, which uh, I used to have on the classic NES series, and got rid of. And now I just have it sitting here, looming over me to try and play it again. I guess to see if I can actually beat it to do a proper review on it. I really don't like that game that much, and there's so many reasons why, but. I guess if I ever do end up beating it, you know, and I can review it now, I need to have it here as a constant reminder. Okay, well, let's put a couple things back quick. Oh yeah, actually, let's gonna grab this quick. I grabbed, I grabbed an actual thing I didn't mean to grab. But it's good, it's more sounds. You know, you don't gotta rush through an ASMR thing, right? You can, you can let it breathe a little bit, you know what I'm saying? Put that back in there. kind of a hard thing with ASMR too because like you try so hard to be like, quiet about it and very careful but in reality it usually comes off better usually anyways when you uh are just natural about it you convey a certain confidence in the sounds you produce Like you do an eye test or like get your ear te hearing test or sight test that you know. And it's like, well, they're not trying really hard to create ASMR, they're not trying hard to be quiet for you. They're just doing what they do, because that's the procedure. And there's that certain confidence in their actions that it really comes through you know this video is insanely long I can't believe I did it for this long I don't even know if this is going to be enough space for me to back up to show you this This was basically the setup guide on the back of this. On one side, the other side is this. You can't really see all of it, but I'll put it up on my wall at some point. It's a huge poster for the NES. Uh, it's just, no, it's just, look at that. Look at that advertisement. This looks really cool. I don't know. I thought it was neat. Um, a cool NES poster. So I'm going to put that up at some point here. Uh, but I should take it out of the box so I don't forget about it. That's really cool. Um, yeah, include that also. 
point this at the ground. I don't know why I worry so much. I'm like I'm gonna incriminate myself by showing something, but like, uh, but I'll be careful. Dead bodies are those are legal now, right? So right here we've got. There it is. Just hooked up into the TV up there. You don't need to see what I'm looking at on YouTube. You don't need to see my subscriptions, but that's it's, it's tiny. So it's like that's the 64 right up there. And there wasn't a good place to put this really because I was like, well, I'll put it next to that, but it wouldn't fit. It just wouldn't quite fit up here. And I tried to put it up here, but I couldn't move my Roku over enough because that cord wouldn't reach then. It was a hassle. So it's like I just set it up on this box and this worked. And now I need to get something in that box still, which is where these overflow of games are going because they don't fit in there because I have too many. I don't have another shelf or anything for that, so there's that. I need to... I never dust. I should do that. <laughs> we got the Game Review Portable sitting up here, too. That's a project that still needs to be finished, and now I got... almost 30 more games to review. I guess I reviewed a couple of those already. <laughs> and yeah, then the... got that size little controller. Which is, you know, friggin... So it's, he's like half the size of the system almost. The thing is tiny, the door doesn't open or anything. It just, it looks neat, I guess. I wish it was a little more weighted. So it was easier to set it on something. It feels like it's really easy for it to slide around when it's so light. Um, that like if you plug it in and like the cord moves, the whole thing is gonna move. Um, yeah, the controller like feels really nice too. Like it does feel like an NES controller, which is just, it's awesome that they made it. Yeah, they did such a nice job on it. And the end is like a USB, so what's awesome about that is then I think there's maybe some other stuff you possibly could plug into here to make it work. Um, but, and this is why I was thinking of maybe getting an NES game on, on Wii U. I've heard you can plug this into your Wii U then and just use this controller on NES games on Wii U, which would be really interesting. And I don't think, I have like one NES game on there right now. And I don't think it's necessary to plug this in to play, you know, or you plug this into your controller, I think. Your Wii controller to play it on there, I think. Your Wii remote, I could be wrong, though. But yeah, I don't think Earthbound Beginnings really requires this. Um, uh, I don't know what I would want to get on there that would require it, though. So, I'm still a little torn on that idea. Um, but I think I could probably also plug it into my computer. If it actually is just a USB end, I think. Maybe it's not. It was not actually U maybe it's not a USB. Well if it is USB I can plug it into the computer and use it there, and if it's not, then I can't. That'll solve that. Cause I didn't even think of that, because I don't think the end of the Wii remote is a USB, so. So shit, I don't know. <laughs> we'll have to I'll have to get back to you on that. Walk back over. Do 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 do. That's pretty much everything except. Um, I guess I don't want to. I wanted to get this video out earlier, but I didn't. I had a Mario Maker level I was gonna do. Uh, I put that out for Christmas. I didn't get it out in time. I got some other stuff out, but not that. And. Uh, I was going to do a review for New Year's, but I didn't get that out either. So, I had some stuff I could have posted, but I just kind of lost track of time and wasn't able to. And this is something that I think would be good for, you know, it would have been really good to post on New Year's if I had gotten this out like I wanted to, but I didn't. Um, but, um, I'm probably still going to do a video of this. Uh, an ASMR video, checking out this calendar, because I got this is a 2018 calendar and um, got Breath of the Wild stuff and that's awesome which I think is all Breath of the Wild, it might just be Zelda it might just be Zelda in general, look at the back, I think it is just Zelda stuff but um, that'll be cool to, you know, actually because I, basically I had it sitting out for a while I was like, I don't know where I'm going to put this and I kind of kept putting it off and eventually I got to the point where I just hadn't used it for so long and I kept forgetting that I had it and so I was like, well, so it doesn't go to waste, I'll just make an ASMR video about it so I can look at all the stuff. And then, um, and then I'll just keep it somewhere because I'll probably look at it again because it has cool artwork in it. 
So, um, at least it seems like it does from the things I'm seeing on the back right now. If those are all the, well, that ruins some of the majesty if I can see all of them, but in larger detail. So we'll go through that and uh, check those out. And I'll just have this as a nice little art thing to keep around somewhere. <laughs> so that's a nice little teaser for you. So uh, in the in the comments then, um, for those of you who do that kind of thing. Um, definitely leave, uh, well obviously you can leave suggestions for what you want to see for more ASMR videos. Um, I've got one where I'm watching video game movies and talking about those. That's nearly done. And I've got one where I'm basically am doing a ton of mini reviews on these sci-fi movies that are like public domain mostly. It's like a pack of like 50 of those and I'm somewhat close to finishing that too. But that's been a long time working on that one. Um, and I got some other movie packs and I do that with just because those are fun and easy enough to do. Um, uh, and then maybe reading some of those uh, game books I have would be a good idea for just getting some page turning videos out there or something. Something out there for you guys. Because I always want to do more. want to do more ASMR, but you know. I don't want it to cut into doing other stuff sometimes, so it can be hard at times to do that. Um, yeah, hopefully uh, you have some suggestions for that. Um, if if you if you like the ASMR stuff, if not, I mean, if people stop once people stop watching them, I'll probably stop doing them. But they've still been doing decent in views at least, if not getting some comments here and there. So I try to keep doing them. And, uh, also there's this, um, there's this, uh, what is the other thing I was going to mention? Oh yeah, if, from all the games I talked about, if you want to see reviews of those or gameplay or something with some of those or whatever, maybe even just some ASMR Let's Play-ish stuff on some of that, like, that would be, that would be, I would be fine with that. Um, just let me know in the comments, that'll be fun. Um, and uh, I'm probably going to do, I didn't really mention this earlier and I haven't really looked yet, but I'm probably going to do some channel cleanup. So any ASMR videos or any of, any of the videos that you want to see and don't want to be uh, taken down, um, especially if they have low views or no comments uh, or both, uh, definitely go on to those and you know hit the hit likes and, and leave or and whatever to get them to stay. The best way is to just leave a comment to be like, don't delete this video. Uh, because I still watch this, I like this one. Uh, I'm gonna watch it again or something, and then because I've had a couple instances where people are like, "Hey, where's this video?" and it's like, "Oh, I deleted it." So always leave comments on the video if you want to stay uh, and mentioning and tell me not to delete them specifically if you think you're gonna come back to them because I don't wanna I don't wanna delete something you actually really liked and I can't just magically recreate. Um, but I'm not gonna get rid of anything that's like super. Uh, I'm not gonna get rid of anything that's super. Um, important I think like all of us in the other Sam episodes are always safe because they're numbered so I kind of have to keep them and all of the uh, more are coming by the way <laughs> and then um you know most of the uh I think pretty much all the music uh, is safe and most of the reviews are safe as well so um it's usually just uh usually ASMR videos maybe some streams for some reason if you do want to keep those to be kept and you worry those might go down those might I'll have to go and look at and evaluate if those are worth keeping up or not for some of that stuff too but I like to try and help clean out my channel because I have way too many videos anyways I'd rather not have a bunch of videos that uh, are not really worth your time to watch um, even for people who are interested in the things the videos are about so I like to do that but I think that's enough, so... Um, I you probably heard that in the background. I think somebody left a message. I should probably go listen to what that was. Hopefully that wasn't too loud and didn't ruin the end of the video. Have a great day. Just a bonus uh, clip. I don't know where I'm going to put this in the ASMR thing. Hopefully I remember to, but I also got this N64 hat. I saw it. And I was like, I really like N64. 
a lot. So I was like, shit, I'd wear that hat. And so I got the hat. Another, just another quick bonus clip to, while well, I'm for squeaky to edit in here. We've got, um, I'm too lazy to take it out of here, but got this Mario Kart thing. Hold on. Actually, maybe I can get some better light on that. Oh, I have this in my pocket. Except when we're squeaky floor again. There we go. Get some light on that. cool yeah too lazy maybe we'll get better pictures of that or something but remote control thing you can actually move in all directions and stuff it's pretty cool play with that for like maybe an hour and the batteries died some of them where the batteries are packed in with it i think so maybe it's partly that i hope but also like it has a thing like you hit a buttons i like the shoulder buttons on that and it's like oh it uh, basically like flips the wheel sideways like in Mario Kart 8 and then it can kind of, it's supposed to be like the hover thing but it barely moves properly when you do that and it doesn't really work on anything but a hard surface if you do those so pretty much not at all like the hover things are supposed to work which makes sense, it's not actually hover technology and then we just got it's this little toy thing that Peach in it. So there's Peach, really tiny Mario Kart thing, got a little sticker I put on there. Almost straight. So hopefully I get pictures of this stuff at some point, but just extra pieces of things for a bonus clip.